Welcome to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. My name is Dardan. I'll be your host for today. We are joined today by Daniela. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. I'm Daniela. I'm a third year student of business entrepreneurship and innovation. And thank you for having me today. Nice. Pleasure. So uh, would you like to explain to us your journey into the University of Greenwich? So how did you find and choose this university? Yeah, so my journey is a bit random, to be honest, because I moved here in England in 2020 and I started university in 2021. But I didn't know about student finance. So when I saw the tuition fee, I was like, "Mm, okay, maybe not. Hmm. So um, then I casually found out about the student finance uh, from a colleague I was working with in a coffee shop. And then I, was, I started considering going to university here in London. Um, however, it was already summer, so I, I was in a real rush to do everything. But thankfully, this person um, put me in contact with a group of people that actually help European students navigating um, the application process uh, for you to study in the UK. Mm. So um, I had the support of this um, group uh, of, of specialists and cons- consultants, and they helped me with the application process um, and with choosing the university as well. So um, there weren't many universities that um, they were working with, but thankfully University of Greenwich was one of those. So um, that's how I chose University of Greenwich, because um, in the pool of universities that they w- w- um, worked with, I thought it was um, the most interesting one. And also once I visited campus, I was like, OK, this looks great. Um, this is where I want to be. I believe that's also a very important part to like where, where you study and where you spend your days. So um, I thought it was really exciting, but also um, what convinced me about University of Greenwich was the fact that University of Greenwich offered this entrepreneurship and innovation course, Mm. whereas the other ones didn't have this specific course. And I was particularly particularly interested in this and it drew my attention. So um, the amazing location, the amazing campus and the good reputation and the fact that they're offering this interesting course. Uh, these are the factors that made me choose University of Greenwich. Very nice. And uh, you also mentioned uh, that you found the entrepreneurship course very interesting. So why did you choose to study entrepreneurship? What kind of led you to that? What about it appealed to you? Yeah, so um, As I said, I wasn't expecting to go to university straight away because I had just moved from Italy to the UK. I didn't know anything about anything. So, uh, but then suddenly I had to apply in less than a month and figure out everything in in less than a month before the the start of the academic year. Mm. Um, So my decision was a bit rushed. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure. So, but still, yeah, entrepreneurship and innovation, I thought it was really interesting. Um, What drew to me, I think, is the word innovation. I I have always been interested in, in innovation and improving things, improving operations. So that's... That's what most drew my attention rather than entrepreneurship. But I also believe that at some point in my life, I will become an entrepreneur. Not now, because I would rather gather more industry experience Absolutely. and find out what I like mm. uh, rather than starting a business straight away without having a strong motivation or passion. But I know that at some point in my life, I want to become an entrepreneur. So I thought that this course would be great to give me the foundations to become an entrepreneur one day. And at the same time, it would enable me to develop business acumen and, and go into the working world with, with 
skills and knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of staying on that same track, what do you think you can do with a degree in entrepreneurship and what are the opportunities available for students who wish to also do entrepreneurship like yourself? Yeah, so um, I think what I've, what I've noticed here in the UK is that you can pretty much study anything and end up in a completely different place. I know people that study history and now work in finance, mm. etc. So I think we shouldn't keep a closed mind when, even if we're studying something and we find out we don't like it, or that's not the industry that we w want to work in, we can still keep an open mind and we can still use our transferable skills to apply to different roles or work in different industry. industry. So keeping that in mind, I would say a degree in entrepreneurship and innovation allows you to work in any business related field, um, to be more specific in operations for sure, project management or um, maybe IT as well, um, finance. Obviously, you don't have the analytical skills that you would get in a finance degree. But I think that this, um, this, this degree, this course, it keeps you with a good, good knowledge and skills to pursue a career uh, in finance and all the industries that I mentioned. Mm. But obviously, um, I think that you, you can work anywhere. Any, all the skills and the knowledge that you gather during your academic journey can be implemented in pretty much any industry. Yeah. I agree. So you also mentioned you came to the UK in 2020 from Italy, is that right? Yeah. And um, so what was, and you also mentioned that in the UK, you can study anything and uh, branch out or maybe have a complete career change. Is that something that maybe is a difference that maybe you can't do in Italy and that, that you can do in the UK instead or? Yeah, so from what I have, I have observed in Italy, I, I don't expect to know exactly how things are, but in my opinion, in Italy, it's a bit more complicated to um, change your career. So, for example, if you study humanities, it is very, it is usually unlikely that you can get a job in a business related field or in finance, etc. Whereas here, I've seen that happen. I've seen people studying theater, history, geography, and ending up in completely different industries. So I think in Italy is a bit more difficult to, um, to allow for this career change, also because of the overall situation of the country uh, where there are high levels of, um, how do you say? Unemployment? Yes, mm. yes. Higher levels of unemployment compared to other countries in Europe or especially the UK. Mm. So, so yeah, I think it's a bit more complicated. And from this point of view, I really, really love the UK. I just really love that the value of the person and what the person can bring doesn't stop to what have you studied? What What's the name of the course? Yeah, I agree. should be like that everywhere, but I guess the world isn't perfect. Um, yeah. And you um, you mentioned that your colleagues uh, presented you these opportunities. Is that right? So yeah. um, would you say um, your initial employment when you were in the UK kind of helped you this this path that you've entered right now? Or Yeah, it definitely helped because um, I, I knew that Someday I wanted to study at university, but I wasn't determined to do it straight away. I didn't imagine that I would move here at the end of 2020 and already start studying in September 2021. Hmm. I thought that getting into university was something that required more time and effort, but um, I was working in this coffee shop and I had a casual ch chat with a co-worker and um, they they mentioned that I could I could get student finance and they made it sound easier. Maybe I was overthinking it. Mm. So so yeah, uh, it, it definitely helped me because if I wouldn't have met that person or if I wouldn't have been in that specific environment, maybe 
I wouldn't have heard about this opportunity in that moment. Maybe I would have found out about it later in life. Or maybe I would have researched, I don't know, but it was definitely very helpful also because I had the opportunity to uh, receive help, uh, receive support from this um, uh, group of, of consultants. Uh, so yeah, that, that experience definitely put me in the right path. Nice. And uh, so now you're a student at the University of Greenwich. So how did you find settling into the university, meeting new people, what are your classes like, etc.? So give us a day in the life of a, a student uh, at the University of Greenwich. Yeah, so as I said at the beginning, I didn't know anything about anything. So the first year was spent working part time as a sales assistant and attending le lectures. And that's all. But um, yeah, my priority wasn't really making friends, to be honest. I was really focused and I just wanted to improve my knowledge and skills and improve my employability skills as well. So I wasn't really looking for the typical university experience where you meet a lot of new people, you make a lot of good friends and you go out and you go to clubs. That's not what I was looking for. But it just happened naturally that I met so many amazing people during my second and third year. And today, for any day, um, if I'm at university, I always run into so many people and I realized, oh, wow, I've made so many friends uh, over my uh, during my journey here at the University of Greenwich and I didn't force it. So that's what makes it great that by getting involved in different activities, I just uh, made uh, a good network of friends. So, um, so yeah, first year was a bit, um, I, it's usually the year that you need to understand how things work and to settle in. Yeah, but absolutely. But then, then in second and third year, I definitely uh, met a lot of friends and it was great. So um, a typical day can vary, it depends, because I think that as a student that gets involved in many different activities, uh, each day can look very different. Mm. So usually the most boring days, I would say, just in include um, attending lectures, tutorials, and working on your assignments or tasks at the, at the library. Um, otherwise, I would be working. I work part-time at university as well. So that's another typical day, uh, nine to five at work. But otherwise, I could be waking up and recording a podcast episode. Or, yeah. <laughs> I, or I could be going to visit certain companies. Like um, a few weeks ago, I went to visit the Google office. Oh, interesting. So uh, we were invited to attend the Discovery Day at Google. Um, we had a quick, a quick look at the building and the main areas. There were a few gyms as well, um, common areas such as uh, rest, like little restaurants inside of the building. Hmm. And then um, members of staff presented the company, what Google does, um, the, innova the innovation that they are implementing. And, and yeah, they talked about their culture as well, which was really interesting. So. A day in the life can look very different based on the circumstances and how many activities you get involved with. Yeah. So you mentioned the activities. So can you maybe explain what these activities are? And you also said you worked at the university as well. Would you like to explain more about that? Yeah, sure. So, for example, I am now part of the career mentoring program. So I have been assigned to a career mentor in Barclays and this person is helping me navigate the working world. Uh, we are going to have one or two meetings a month where we are going to establish my goals and see how we can achieve that. So this is one of the things that I'm involved with. But for example, I was also an NUS delegate last year in the academic year 2022-2023. Uh, 
Um, so I was a delegate for the National Union of Students, me and a few others at the University of Greenwich. And we attended a national conference in Harrogate to talk about student rights and how we can improve student experience in England. So that was really cool as well. Um, last year, I was also involved with the society. Um, it was the Highlight Society, where our aim was to help students improve their employability skills by delivering workshops such as uh, how to improve your LinkedIn profile, your CV, cover letter, um, how to present yourself during an interview and things like that. And I was the marketing officer for that. And yeah, this year I've mainly been involved in activities such as discovery days in companies, as I mentioned before. I visited Google, JLL, um, Charlton Athletic Football Club as well, nice. uh, Barclays. So it was really, really interesting. And other activities that I took part in um, include the generator, uh, which is... Uh, a department at university support service probably yeah something um, like that <laughs> it's more of the like entrepreneurship um support service of yeah. university so they organize every year several uh, business consulting competitions and i took part to many of those and it was a great learning experience uh, because they are two days long so saturday and sunday so you have to commit um, to this and they structure it in a way that you learn along the way so they deliver several workshops and then you work with your groups to create uh, to structure your ideas your solutions and to create a presentation and pitch it in front of a jury so that is really challenging and interesting as well um, I, I also won first place one time, so it's also very Congratulations. rewarding. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So also I've been involved in many activities uh, organized by G Generator. Very nice. Um, so you're very much involved in the uh, employability aspect when it comes to, you know, your society's uh, and other extracurricular activities. So um, as is the case with a lot of students, not just in Greenwich, but and all across England, um, a lot of students don't really tend to focus on their future employability as such whilst they're studying. They'd rather just get their studies over and done with. So do you think this is uh, a topic that has to be emphasized more? Um, I would say that it depends because I feel like um, maybe some students don't have the mental space to focus on employability as well, and they prefer to prioritize their studies. So it depends on your personal goals and priorities. For me, for example, it is really important to leave university and find a job where uh, the culture is healthy, but also where I can grow professionally because I am personally a very ambitious person. So um, I have high expectations from my professional self. So that's why I'm focusing a lot of my energies in the employability as aspect, because this is my goal. But other people, other students might have different goals or might have a different reason to why they are at university. So I wouldn't say that everybody must or has to uh, take part in extracurricular activities or employability activities. Uh, because I understand that full-time studies, um, it, it's tough. You yeah. know, you you have to you have to keep up with assignments, coursework, and all that. So, but I would definitely suggest to all of the students to take part in a few activities that they like, because they they will never regret it because they bring so much uh, skills, soft skills, hard skills knowledge and you don't even realize it you don't even realize how much you're learning and how much you're improving personally and professionally but it does bring a lot of benefits and along the way you also make a lot of friends but in my experience i noticed that there are there is a good portion of students that is interested in this service but every time that i attend these events it's always the same people it's 
almost the same group of people. So when I would go to the generator events, I would always recognize the same people over and over again. Or when I went to the discovery days as well. Um, so yeah, I would say there are probably many students that are not interested in employabilities, but the ones that are, they are really committed. Mm. You'll see them everywhere. But yeah, I would definitely advise everybody to do their best to do at least one extracurricular activity uh, each term. So staying on the same topic, uh, what would you advise students that are interested in doing extracurricular activities or maybe wanting to do a placement or internship, but they don't know where to start, for example? Yeah, I wish somebody would have told me how to do this because in my first year, as I said, I didn't know anything about anything. So I didn't accomplish much from an extracurricular point of view. And that didn't help me when I was looking for internships in the summer between first and second year because I didn't get any. So I would say if you're on your first year, um, there are several activities that you can get involved in. This can either be societies or competitions organized by the generator or attending uh, the events organized by the employability team, such as vi visit, uh, visiting offices, like visiting Barclays and things like that. So you can either do all of these, but if you feel like this would be too, overwhel too overwhelming, then I would say just find the thing that draws your attention. You can either, either take part in sports teams. That's something that I haven't done, for example, but that's also a very good extracurricular to put on your CV. So just find at least one of these activities, choose one of these and uh, sign up for it so that you can add it to your CV and you can use the trans transferable skills or even hard skills that you gained with this activity uh, in your CV. And that can definitely help you secure an internship between your first and second year. Then I would say it's really important if you're, if you're really interested about employability and you don't want to drive crazy on your third year when you're looking for graduate schemes, I would say try your best to find an internship between the first and second year. If you cannot, it's not the end of the world. I didn't get one, even though I tried. So it's okay. But if you can, that would definitely make it easier for you during your second, third, and when you graduate. Um, a good way to find, to secure an internship in that moment is to attend Insight Days. So Spring Insight Days, which are uh, days organized by companies where you, can, where you can visit the office and shadow members of staff and you can get noticed by recruiters or build your network. So it's almost as uh, like a taster day, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. There are also spring weeks, so that's, that's also a bit longer, a longer time frame. Um, and many companies organize this, so just type online spring days, um, insight, spring insight days, um, spring insight weeks. And if you can attend one of these, um, you might get a chance to work for that company during the summer or another company might appreciate that you took the time to, uh, for, this, for this spring insight week or day. So yeah, just get involved in at least one extracurricular activity and also attend Spring Insight Days hmm. for weeks. Very insightful, thank you. And um, you mentioned the generator several times. Um, so obviously it's a support service that helps students um, fund uh, support and train their business ideas. So um, what advice would you give students that um, want to get involved but don't know what business idea to start with or they need help with uh, you know brainstorming and whatnot yeah so I would say that they shouldn't worry about this too much what I would say is keep an eye for uh, generator emails that you receive and as soon as there is an event organized by the generator sign up and attend 
Uh, once you get to the event, you will uh, meet the organizers. They're all very nice and very supportive and you will feel supported and welcomed. And that will already put the foundation for you to feel more confident in creating your business idea. Mm. So by attending the events organized by the generator, you will get the foundations to actually uh, think about your business idea. So before you do attend any events, don't worry about, don't worry about the fact that you don't have the idea yet. Just attend the events and then with mentoring provided by the team and with the workshops that they deliver, you will be able to produce um, a viable business idea. They will support you in that. So just sign up and go to the event. Nice. Very nice. Um, and are you involved in any other uh, entrepre entrepreneurial programs outside of the university? Yeah, so at the moment I'm an intern for the Mayor's uh, Entrepreneur Program and my aim is to promote this Mayor's Entrepreneur Competition to students. Uh, this competition funds business ideas. Um, the funding goes up to £20,000. So if you're interested in setting up your business, then definitely do apply to this competition. Um, obviously, we're looking for ideas that make London a better place. So it can either be a sustainable and environmental idea, it can be creative, it can be health related or technology related. And each one of these categories uh, will award a prize of £20,000. So yeah, if you have a business idea that you're interested in launching this could be a great opportunity to get some some funding and kickstart your business. Very nice. And how's it been um, working for the Mayor's Entrepreneurial Program? Um, how did you get into it? How did you find it, etc.? Yeah, this was thanks to university, actually, because the employability team sent an email uh, saying that there was this uh, paid internship opportunity. Um, and I took it on the fly, I applied straight away, and then I was shortlisted for a panel interview. And uh, I'm very glad that I got the position. It's, uh, I think, 25 of us at the University of Greenwich. So a pretty, oh, no, sorry, 25 in all London universities. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two at the University of Greenwich. But in general, um, it's a pretty big group of interns um, across London. And yeah, it's been really, really exciting journey because I have the autonomy to uh, choose how I want to promote the competition. And this can either be by um, presenting it during lectures or employability and generator events or by um, or by sharing it on social networks, etc. So it's been really great collaborating with my team and brainstorming to um, to do our best uh, to get the to raise awareness about the competition. And the part that I like the most is to motivate students to believe in their idea and 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 sign up for the competition with a chance of winning. Because so many people don't apply because they think that their idea is not good enough. So it's really good to just make people understand that uh, they, they get zero chance if they don't apply. So, so yeah, it's, that's the part that I enjoy the most. Nice. And um, you said that your role in, uh, entails, you know, raising awareness for this program. So would you say you're very much involved in the marketing aspect? Um, in your role? Yeah, yeah. I would say that all of us interns who are involved in the marketing because our uh, key aim is to raise awareness of the competition. Uh, but then I also create uh, marketing calendars to set up our strategy over the months across different platforms such as Instagram, X and LinkedIn. So yeah, I would say it's more uh, marketing and marketing strategy focused. Nice. And um, would you say this employment experience so far has uh, shaped your um, future path at all? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely, because um, I also wanted an internship, to be honest, because um, I think employers are always looking for graduates that already have some experience. So this internship experience has, I believe it will be very beneficial um, and it will look very good on my CV. But also um, I've, I've never been involved in a job that requires me to be creative and to decide on my own what I'm going to do and to what length I am going to put my effort. So, for example, reaching out to lecturers, um, to departments at universities, or the way that you do your promotion is completely up to you. So this has helped me a lot to motivate myself to do my own work without having somebody check um without having somebody micromanaging me if that makes sense yeah understandable yeah so yeah i've improved from that point of view i'm a bit more of a go-getter than i was before yeah very nice well daniela thank you very much um you've definitely inspired me to start my own business so um hopefully that will come soon um pleasure having you on the uh, podcast and uh We'll see you at the next episode. Thanks to you for inviting me. Pleasure. Thank you. You can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. Subscribe to never miss an episode.